All right, the B20 CRV B18 LS P75 non VTEC head. We are working on share what we do on how to improve or what we do to improve the flow and its whole efficiency. And we'll also talk about the Mugen use the B20A on their Formula 3 motors. Even Toda, did you know that? And also we'll talk about the exhaust and a lot of misconceptions or misinformations that everyone follows. And you know, after this video, you might have a better idea on what to do. Here is the P75 CRV or B18 LS non VTEC head, unported and ready to go. So let's head up to the porting bench, shall we? All right, now we lubricate each port, or well, each run, you know, because we're using the carbide. So that's ATF and kerosene or mineral spirits, all right? Okay, there we start getting the shape that we desire and to get all the consistency okay now let's speed it up all right so the thing here is that when you port certain heads you cannot just apply what works on the other platform like for example if you port the b series head a vtech you know like a b16 you cannot apply what works there to this or even the d series you know this is why we see some that do well on the b series but not good on the d series or whatever platform okay now let's flip it let's hit the floor all right you can see we're getting all the shape that we desire all right okay now let's turn it again let's go for the bowls okay and the thing is each platform wants different kind of work that includes depending on the setup and depending on the application so you know you gotta go to someone who knows to the ones that aren't all talk and who actually could explain to you exactly what's going on or what's needed kind of like us you know now let's spray this with water and head to the clean bench to show you guys the current status all right now here it is the initial rough up stage with the carbide look where the shape is getting there you know almost and let's go with the before and after pictures from stockport but let's go with these ones first. You can see the shape is getting to how we want it. Look, it looks really, really nice and good. We all know it's going to be really, really efficient. Now, here we go with the before and after. This is the stock intake port. You can see it's shaped really good, actually. And now with the rough out carbide and you notice we're not changing it to an extreme sense you know we're just getting the shape a little bit better as far as consistency goes and the bends look at those angles right it's gonna be really really efficient especially when we show you after the sanding roll you can see right and here's a look of the stock ports and then the carbide finish okay now let's go to the exhaust now here it is, your stock ports. It's ready to get the shaping started. Now let's head to the workbench. All right, now the carbide here. Actually, on the P75 CRV non VTEC head, the approach you take for the exhaust shaping is a little different from, let's say, the B series VTEC and also the D series VTEC, the single overhead cam. Each platform needs a different approach on the exhaust and the intake. So, you know, we're focusing here on good scavenging. This way, this gets even more efficient. And the more efficient it goes or it gets, the more power it can create and improve fuel consumption. Because gas prices now are pretty high, you know. Let's do this. And we're confident with this because last time we did this, the CRV reached 15 kilometers to a liter here the finished port 
look and you know when you think about 15 kilometers to a liter that's 35 miles per gallon and this was driven on the city you know with all the traffic not even the highway wouldn't you want that because i would all right now here's the carbide finish carbide shaped actually and now let's go to the before and after let's go now you can see the stock ports, right? And this is the shape it got. You can see we didn't really hog the ports out. You can still see from the stock and you can still still see the casting marks, right? It's not totally hogged out. We're just getting the shape that we want and need to increase efficiency, you know? And did you know that Mugen used the B20A non-VTEC to power its Formula 3? racers and that's road racing or circuit racing even toda did the same thing for their formula 3 program imagine that that's like 10 laps on a friday practice 15 on qualifying and 40 for the race that's efficient and one thing i want to mention is that we see people or the guys that run b16 or or a gsr head that they lock the vtech for race use you know which is totally fine and good my only issue with that is they start calling it all time vtech or it's vtech all the way or the vtech is on for good but when you think about it they gotta stop sounding like fools because vtech means variable valve timing and lift electronic control keyword variable so it doesn't really matter if you lock the vtech lobes or the primaries and secondaries like toda the fact that you lock the vtech you actually remove the variable valve timing and lift equation so technically you simply just did a non-vtech version you know so quit sounding like a fool now let's head back to the porting bench all right, now we spray the ethyl alcohol mix with soapy water because we're going to hit it up with 80 grit. All right, wait. Oh, it's still not shut on. All right. Now here, we're going to start making passes to get the carbide surface even out, you know. It's going to get better. Now let's go faster. All right. And on this certain motion that I do or I use, it lets me feel if there's bumps or you know uneven surfaces this way it gets me to see or to, to manage to smooth it out better and more appropriately and at the beginning of the video i did mention that you know when you port the b series vtech head and then you port a d series single overhead cam h22 and even an s2000 and a K series they all need different you know different kinds of work done to it and whatever you do that works on a b series v tech definitely not work on a single overhead cam head or even a k series this is why you see some builders or some porters they make a good b series v tech head but they can't pull it off as good in a single overhead cam or vice versa we've seen builders that do good cylinder heads for a single overhead cam but they just can't push it for a b series right that's because they try to apply what works for one platform and hoping that it will work for the other which is not the case when you think about it flow does not know what engine it is or what casting it is all it knows is it will flow when the surface is consistent and shaped well so you got to understand the dynamics of the engine like for example you have to understand if a certain casting needs a lot of port volume or not or if it has too much already okay now here we finish up the bowl now we're gonna wash it and then bring it to the clean bench to show you guys this condition or the status you know, here it is but before this let me talk about the exhaust system and all the misconceptions about it okay now here's a layout of an exhaust a lot of times locally they run a scav which is just a resonator that's it you know it terminates here the thing is they think they go faster but obviously it's just louder you know but when when you look at the exhaust system it doesn't 
really make much sense because for example when you run a megaphone even even that it compensates the length by the expansion but it takes a certain amount of calculations to achieve that and it's only burns collector or burns stainless in the u.s that managed to do this consistently this is why all the known headers run that and when I said earlier that it just makes more noise, my Puerto Rican friends would have a laugh at this. We call it Shento Bente because you're running, you sound like you're running Shento or 100, but technically you're just running Bente or 20 kilos per hour. You know, it sounds loud, sounds fast, but is slow. Now visualize this with me for a minute. That's the exhaust flow. It starts from the beginning there, then keeps flowing. Hopefully you can visualize what I'm trying to show here, right? And you can see the length actually helps scavenge better and also with a good muffler, okay? Now you can see that, right? Here, as we know, the exhaust is all connected. We're trying to show you this for a better visual. As the exhaust here comes out, it actually pulls the incoming exhaust from the header that connects together and it makes it scavenge better. There, it starts pulling each other, it helps, right? And this is why even on motorcycles, a tuned pipe is important. The length is critical. Yes, those are two strokes, but you know, when we're talking about harmonics, it does not matter if it's two stroke, four stroke or whatever. Sound is sound when it comes to harmonics and the length. Now let's go back to the intake. Look, it's all finished up and all shaped well. Now let's look a little closer. There, you can see. Now let, we can go with the before and after just about now. Onto the stock ports and then the carbide shaped and then the 80 grit. You can see the difference in how good it is, right? And on different angle, you can see how the shape is achieved and efficiency is our target. Look, it looks really good, right? It took shape. Now let's head on to the exhaust, all right? Here we are in the exhaust with the 80 grit getting the shape achieved or done. You know, as you can see, there are areas that we didn't hit with the carbide. That's because there is no need to chop them off or remove material. We just need it smoothened out, you know? And that's the thing that I wanted to talk about. You have seen certain ports that even some ledges that, that's there because of the core shift, people remove it with a carbide burr. And sure, that's fine because when you make a pass with the 80 grit, it looks really, really good. But there are some core shifts that if you remove it, you increase the volume or the cross-section way too much. And therefore, it doesn't let you get to the desired ratio. You know, here we're doing the floor. As you can see, we slowly get the consisti consistency up, right? It's starting to look really, really nice, right? And you can see here, we try to minimize material remov removal because we already got enough material with a carbide earlier. So now here, we're going to go with the bowl, try to get it as consistent as possible because the flow here is coming from, from the chamber across the valve seat into the port. So you got to make the transition really good and efficient. Therefore, the scavenging effect of the exhaust that we talked about earlier does its job really, really well. That's how you get above 100% volumetric efficiency, you know. Not with crazy parts, but with proper engine building. Now after this, we're gonna wash it up with solvent and soap, and then we're gonna show you the finished product. Now let's go. Now would you look at that? All finished and all done. Look, you can see it's gonna be really efficient. Now let's go look closer into the ports here. As you can see, it's gonna be good, right? Now let's go with the before and after. You see here the stock ports carbide and then the finished right on a different angle stock ports carbide and then the finished product again on the other side of the angle then carbide and then the finish okay now we can go back to the intake 
as I know some of you guys love checking it out the before and after and seeing the shape of the head goes right okay you know that this one is my spare cylinder head so the local CRV owners hey if you guys want to have an efficient CRV that consumes good fuel like 15 kilometers to a liter message us